Hi, I'm Ryan from educate.me. And today I'm gonna to show you an easy and quick way to make entry or exit tickets using Google Forms and Google Slides. Using entry and exit tickets is a great way to gauge how your class is doing or to help them get ready for your class at the start of the class. I use entry tickets a lot just to get the kids settled down. I was at the high school level get them settled down and in the mindset of what we're going to do today. But I want to be able to easily do my entry tickets without going through a whole lot of work because I wanted to do it every day and wanted to do it as quickly as possible. So today I'm going to show you how I did that using Google Slides and Google Forms. So in Google Forms, what I did first was I created a generic Google Forms. I used the exact same Google form every single time. I didn't create it for each one because that takes too much time. So I can call it entry ticket. And the questions, I just were named question one. And then I had A, B, C, D, E. And then we'll duplicate that for question two, and then question three is a paragraph. Now, I didn't make each one of these questions required because some days I might not have three questions, but that's all it is for the form. The form is done. And so you can see what it looks like. This is what they see, question one, question two, question three. And they can write longer for this one. I use the same form every single time. To give them the questions, that's where Google Slides comes in. So on my entry ticket, I'd have three questions. Oops. Here is where I'd write out my questions. So I'd have question one, So here's an example of what my ent entry ticket would look like. Remember our form? It just has A through E, A through E, and then question three. So here they have, which of the following cannot be a variable? And they select which one of those cannot be a variable and take it. I can have true and false just by giving them A and B as true and false, and just ignoring the C, D, and E. Now you will have some smart aleck kids that, well, I'm gonna put C. Well, then you chastise them later. And then finally, they can write a two line program and they can do that down in the short the paragraph because they can have multiple lines in that short paragraph. So the next day, I can duplicate this layout of this slide and just go in and change the questions for each one without changing anything else. They can use the same uh, Google form to enter their answers and I don't have to do anything. Now you do have to share this link for the form out to them somehow, um, either through Google Classroom or email it to them. And I forgot to turn on collect email addresses is very important. So you know who, who submitted what. Um, this you would be restricting it to your own school. Do not check the limit to one response because then you can't reuse the form. So a student would get here. So here's our form. And let's have a student come in and fill that out for us. So the student would click on this link either through Google Classroom. They would do their answers. And they were done. 
nice, quick and easy. They use the same form every time. But Brian, how do you go through all those entry tickets because you'll have multiple days in there? Well, Google has you covered. If you open up the spreadsheet and well, let's name this before we do that. There we go. If you create a spreadsheet for the results, all of the results will be time stamped so you know exactly, okay, this is that day's results. And see, you see exactly my answers. Now I must not have something else right because it didn't put my email address on there. Oh, gosh darn it, I forgot to check that and save it. Okay, let's try that again as Johnny. There we go, your email address is recorded when you submit this form. So this would be a second day. Now if you look at this, it puts in the address so you know who did it. So when you create your form, be sure you click the gear, collect email addresses and restrict. And more importantly, hit save. So you're not getting a bunch of responses that you don't know who did what. So now I can look and see exactly who did what and I have a nice little record so I can look, okay, who who did, who got this one wrong? And I can go and see, okay, let's find out why they got that wrong. But I use this same form every time and then I don't have to worry about them doing, I don't have to worry about redoing this form. Now, a final piece of the puzzle is, I like to have this as an entry activity as they come in, and I like to give them a sense of urgency. So I will insert a two minute timer. Now, when you're doing timers, be sure you play it all the way to the end because say this one with a two timer with a giant bomb explosion is probably not appropriate for school. So pick one that and watch it to the very end to make sure it's something that you want to have at school. So now I can put that timer in the bottom corner and when the students come in, I can start the timer and for some reason it's only 10 seconds, but <laughs> No, it was 10 second cut down until it starts. So they know exactly, okay, I have two minutes to fill, finish filling this out. So it gives them that sense of urgency of, okay, I gotta settle down, I gotta answer these questions, and I gotta be ready for that. Depending on your class, maybe you only need a minute. Maybe you need three minutes. It depends on how, um, how in depth the questions are and how much time you want them to take. So two minutes is usually what I do. So how I did that, let's just do this on this other one. Insert video, search for a two minute timer. And in case you need a timer in 4K, YouTube has you covered. And you can't have the timer start when you go to the slide. I like to bring it all up and then when the students start coming in, I can then start because you know sometimes. So that's how I use Google Forms and Google Slides to create entry tickets for my students. Thank you for watching this far. Be sure to like this video and visit me over at educate.me. Stay classy.